الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد So we have uh, resumed our lesson that we have uh, in reading uh, and we're discussing the book uh, Bulug Al-Maram and uh, discussing Kitab As-Salat and uh, we have ended concerning what is mentioned by Ibn Hajar Rahimullah regarding those matters that pertain to Sifat As-Salat but and also by way of continuation that the ulama that they usually also discuss a matter regarding Sujood As-Sahu as this is attached to the Salat so we have started that discussion regarding uh, Sujood As-Sahu and uh, we have mentioned uh, some of the hadith and some of the ahkam pertaining to this. So mentioned, uh, so we discussed concerning, generally concerning errors that may occur in the salat, that uh, of the things that uh, we said a person should consider concerning that uh, uh, either cases would be that there is ziyada, something have been added to the salat, and what to be done in that case, and also we have cases where some type of deficiency may have occurred in the salat, and we discuss concerning those matters, then the third scenario is concerning a person having shak, having doubt regarding uh, certain uh, uh, aspect of the salat. So what to be done if the person have uh, doubt regarding certain actions of the salat. So we'll be discussing those ahadith and those ahkam pertaining to sujood as sahu. Uh, I think we had ended with a hadith of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Qutri. That's the hadith we ended with, who recalls. I got a star next to two six three, uh, but what hadith is that one? That's Bukhari. Hey, who's the narrator? Is it five? I think. Hey. Two six five. Uh, what? My number is different from your numbers. No. I thought we ended on Abu Hurairah. Uh, two which six three, is? but the one you you mentioned, I think, is two six five. Oh. That's in the game. Hey. From two from two two six five. Okay, the hadith before, okay, which hadith is that one? Which hadith are you talking about? 265 is the way that Abu Sayyid al Qudri and Allah's Messenger Yeah, we discussed that hadith. We done that one. Yeah, we did that one. Hey, concerning Dhul Yadin, we discussed the hadith of Dhul Yadin regarding the person. We discussed that hadith of the, the one that we ended with last. We may be on two six. Do you think we're on two six six? Uh, the one of uh, hadith of uh, Abu Hurairah Taala. Uh, Insha'Allah. Hey, we complete that hadith. I can recall that we did that hadith. You have Ibn Mas'ud. Or Imran Ibn Hussein. No, no. So it finished. We did that one. So next hadith that comes in my book will be the hadith of Abu Sa'id Al Khudri. That will be the next hadith. Then a hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. Praise God. No, no, you must. No, no, no. So the hadith of, okay, we'll start with the hadith of Abu Sa'id al Khudri. And then we'll. Uh, I'll just go over that one again. Yeah? Alright, we'll go over that one. <coughs> 265. A1. That's the one in your book? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What it says? What's the hadith? Narrated Abu Sayyid al Qudri. Uh, <coughs> Allah Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When any one of you is in doubt about his Salah prayer and does not know how many he has prayed, three or four account, he should cast aside his doubt and base his, his prayer on what he is sure of. Then he should perform two prostrations before Taslim salutation. If he has prayed five rakat, then he will make his salah um, prayer an even number for him. And if he has prayed exactly four, they, i.e., two prostrations, will be humiliation uh, for the devil, reported by Muslim. I, uh, so, concern that, so uh, continue concerning that discussion concerning of those ahkam that relates to Sujood al Sahu. So, this hadith that you mentioned uh, of uh, the hadith of. Uh, Abi Sa'id al Qurra ta'ala anhuma, or ta'ala anhu, and the hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim. So the hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim uh, in his uh, Sahih. Uh, and uh, this particular hadith, 
as mentioned concerns no hukum it is discussed concerning the hukum man shakka wa lam yatarajjah indahu shay the person who have doubt regarding his salat concerning you know what uh, omen or rakat he has uh, done and he's unable to decide as to where he's actually at in his salat so the person who generally has doubt in his salat so this hadith is to discuss this particular matter regarding that we mentioned the third scenario that may occur a person having doubt in his salat uh, where is that am I in my third rakah or my fourth rakah am I in my third or my second so that's the type of doubt that a person has in his salat so what is to be done in such cases as for this particular hadith it shows as a dalil that uh, a person in his salat may have doubt so something a person may pray with a person praying as the imam uh, or munferid that he may sometimes have doubt regarding where is at in his salat Nam. so uh, uh, this hadith also is to kind of somewhat to give us a uh, a a way out regarding such scenario give us the way out regarding such a uh, situation that we may have in, uh, regarding our salat so i mentioned that uh, for the, so the person have doubt regarding the salat where he's unable to uh, is undecided undecided as to whether he's in his third or fourth where is that in his salat then what is to be done then have another case another scenario the person he has initiated some doubts but then uh, is able can make a decision regarding or decide as to where is that in his salat now so that's concerning these matters to be uh, to be discussed as for the first case scenario a person has doubt in his salat regarding am i my third or my second rakah or my third or fourth rakah so while there he can somewhat uh, thought about it then he was able to come to a decision that didn't recall that I'm actually in my third not my fourth so that's a case of yakin so the person even though initially there was some doubt but he was able then to come to a uh, uh, a conclusion regarding where is that in his salat now that is for example that case concerned the person having yakin as the hadith mentioned that uh, so the person uh, uh, so the person was able to come, uh, come to a conclusion then the person he just continues through with his salat so the person as we mentioned so the person had doubt but was uh, whether i'm on my third or fourth rakah but then he uh, realized actually my third rakah so we could say you know, and he hasn't reached his fourth he knows that he doesn't fall. so in that case he just continues through with his salat because initially there was doubt but he was able to come to he was able to uh, was that the come to a conclusion or uh, recall where is that in his salat now in that case then just continue through his salat and uh, uh, from where he's at to, uh, through to the end as he was able to uh, come to some type of certainty regarding his salat so that case is normally clear now then a more case of doubt in a person have doubt and he's undecided and he's unable to make First a decision could say he had some doubt but he figured it out but he figured it out so that one he just continues through with his salat now uh, then the next scenario is a person who have doubt in his salat am i my third or my fourth and is unable to work it out so in that case they mention that a person then he goes to the least number so if he's considering he's undecided between three and four two and three one and two then he goes to the the least now so concerns yakin. so he goes to that which is certain of and that kind is applied across the board so my final situation may occur regarding the person making tawaf i'm going around the kaaba am i on my sixth or my seventh or my fifth or my fourth then always if he's undecided unable to work things out to figure things out then he goes back to the least number and he works from there and that's concerning he said Mabni ala yakin, which is Mabni, ma, that he go back to the least number because that's the thing that he's certain of the certainty is now with the least number so he work with them from the least number so in that case working with the least number as mentioned that the person uh, will then carry through with his salat and before he give the taslim he make sujood as sahu before the taslim so in the case where the person was in doubt and then uh, undecided and he was unable to work it out 
So he opt to go to, uh, to the option concerning the lease number. So in that scenario, then the person will continue. If he said, okay, uh, three and four, he goes to three, then he can somewhat continue from three onwards, complete the Salat. When he reach the end of the Salat, before he give the Taslim, he will make sujood sahu, then give the Taslim. Give sujood as sahu, then give the, the Taslim. So in this case, the Taslim, sujood sahu is before the Taslim. Uh, and that's the call concerning Jumur of the Ulama, that they are of this view. And some kind of indicate, like Anna Rahimullah, indicate that there is some type of ijma regarding that in that scenario, then that's the way to approach it. Uh, any of other hadith that's of that meaning, that can somewhat coincide that meaning, that the person, if you have doubt, undecided, then he goes to the least number and he continues with his salat, then makes sujood to sahu, then give the taslim. <coughs> then uh, the problem is that I'm concerned that, that uh, uh, of the matter that he mentions here uh, that one, if the person takes the approach of going to Taslim or going to the least number, then he mentioned that Fakal, uh, in Kana, Salla Hamza. Shafa'na lahu as salatu. That the person video that, that that will even it out. So whatever number, whatever he does, that will be the thing to even it out. That's the thing the Sharia have legislated for the person and somewhat to even out or to balance out his salat. Go to the lease, nam, and that can somewhat balance everything out for him. Nam. Then the second option that uh, also they serve for second benefit concerning that term is a form of also humiliation for the, the shaitan. As the shaitan Concerns that he's the one who can somewhat always try to divert the person in Salat. And of those things, to play shak in his Salat. Nam? So the Shaitan, uh, so that also by doing so, that uh, the Shaitan, that uh, is humiliated by, do that by, of by this act. And uh, as some of the ulama mentioned that from this hadith, it shows that a person of doubt in his Salat, it doesn't require the person to. Uh, uh, because we have doubt in our salat uh, and even sometimes unclear as to where we're at in the salat then a person and someone he ends the salat right there and restarts it again he doesn't have to go through that method so he doesn't have to use this method of because I'm in doubt either a person with my salat becomes invalid immediately or a person who's unable to work things out then he can somewhat start to then he tries to end the salat right there and restart it again then there's no need for this because we have this system in place regarding, in such cases, this is the approach to be used regarding cases of doubt. And also it shows that regarding a person will have doubt in his salat, or may have doubt in his salat. May have doubt in his salat, uh, to the sense that he's confused, where is that? But then Islam, uh, putting everything in its proper order, that I've given him a method of how to resolve such situation. Resolve such situation. And also it shows regarding the Muslim in his Salat is not expecting the person that uh, and also from this shows concerning Khilaf al zahiriya that Al-Khushu uh, min wajibat salat that the Zahiriyah all concerning a person having Khushu in his Salat that is of the components that is the composed component of Salat this is not the case it is something which is uh, uh, something that the person tried to achieve in his Salat but not having Khushu short his Salat it makes your Salat invalid immediately Naam? Uh, and it shows that the person may have doubt, showing the person in some, for reasons, that uh, was not concentrating enough where this doubt came upon him. Uh, but he has a method regarding how to, to resolve the situation. So based upon this hadith of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, and also the hadith of the first hadith of Abu Buhayna, it shows regarding that, in certain situation, that uh, uh, in the hadith of uh, Abu uh, Buhayna, that the Prophet said that he missed what? Sujood, uh, Tashahud, uh, Al Awwal, Tashahud, and the Prophet said he can somewhat, he missed that. No? And the scenario uh, that he what? He uh, gave the Taslim, or gave Sujood Sahu before the Taslim. So the Ulma mentions also, yeah, certain cases where that, uh, such as this case, that uh, 
sujood al sahu is done before the taslim. In the case either person he missed something, such as the wajibat of salat, uh, then he would do the taslim, then do the, he would do the sujood al sahu, then the taslim, and also in this scenario, if the person is in doubt, and he has to go to the least number, then in that scenario, in that case also again, the person would do the sujood al sahu, then the person would give the taslim. Now, uh, so that's concerning that hadith is more so is uh, discussing us on the, 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 the third case regarding the person having doubt in salat and what to be done. Uh, so we'll go to the next hadith that follows the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud because we're trying to end this bab today, inshallah. Sure. <coughs> As all those hadith, they mentioned them in some book, they mentioned all those hadith and discuss them all together because they are similar. They have discussed all those hadith together. And today we're using most of the shahr of Shaykh Abdullah Fawzan. So you have a series of Fawzan, but this one is Abdullah Fawzan, not the Fawzan that is. This one is, uh, we have uh, Shaykh Saleh Fawzan. He has an explanation of Bulugul Maras I mentioned before. Nam, that's about in five or six volumes. Nam, then you have uh, another Fawzan who's Abdullah Fawzan. Nam, uh, Abdullah Fawzan. Uh, his books, if you see them, is like a book. If you see his books, just buy it and you can close your eyes. <laughs> now, because his books are very ilmiya. His books are one of those people that uh, his books are very beneficial. And regarding concerning Bulugul Maram, of the contemporaries that have explained Bulugul Maram, his explanation is also one of the top ones. Not saying that it is the top one, but one of the top ones regarding his explanation regarding Bulugul Al Maram, even now in some of the universities, used as uh, a part of the syllabus in some universities. This one, his explanation is used, and it's still a muqtasar. He didn't go into as in depth as he wanted to. But one of the beneficial ones regarding explanation. So that's concerning that particular hadith. Then we'll go to the next hadith, the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. Narrated Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offered prayer and when he said taslim he was asked oh Allah's Messenger has something new happened to the salat he said he asked what is that they said you have prayed so many you have prayed so many and so many rakat he Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu said he then bent his legs faced the Qibla and made two prostrations and then said the taslim then he faced us and, and said if something new is introduced to the salat I shall inform you but I am a human being like you, I forget just as you forget. So if I forget, remind me. And if any of you is in doubt about his salah, he should act, <coughs> act upon what he thinks is, thinks is correct and complete his prayer in that respect. And then he should make two prostrations agreed upon. And in the narration of Al-Bukhari, he should complete the prayer, then he should say Taslim and then perform the prostration. And in, in the narration of Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed two sajood sahu after the sleep and talking. Hey, so this is concerning again concerning uh, the Sheikh uh, in this particular uh, Ibn Hajj rahim Allah again concerning discussing concerning cases of shak regarding what to be done regarding a case where a person also have doubt in his salat. So also the, uh, the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud that is mentioned here also cover this particular uh, topic. Fakal sallallahu alaihi wasallam falam sallam. Uh, so when the Prophet said he prayed and was said to him, Ya Rasulullah, Ahtata fi salat shay, Ahtata fi salat shay, have anything new been introduced in the regard of the salat? So the companions, they saw that uh, something was done which was a bit different now in the salat. So what an ask, so they asked so ask, so ask him, or try, try to see clarity regarding, has anything new been introduced regarding the salat? Regarding anything have been revealed? Because while the Prophet Islam was still alive, it was still those days of Tashriya. So still revelation was being revealed and also maybe new rules still also could be still be revealed regarding any matter. So certain things they were not in ace uh, regarding certain things but try to verify because things were still being revealed and rules were still being uh, established. So he mentioned Ahdat fi Salat, shame as anything new regarding the Salat. Faqal, ma thalik, what is this? Faqalu, salayta kaza wa kaza. فقال فثنا رجليه واستقبل كبلة فسجد سجدتين ثم سلم ثم أقبل علينا بوجهه فقال 
إنه لو حدث في الصلاة شيء أنبهتكم به. So here is the answer. When on to explain that uh, we explain concerning the scenario, and it shows regarding our companions that even they use a question of Prophet Islam regarding certain matters. So the Prophet Islam, in the sense of being a Nabi and being the person, the Muallim, the teacher, Nam, that even a companion they saw something that was that requires some clarity, they would uh, put those questions to the Prophet Islam. Uh, to get that clarity so asking a person who does something that for you it may be something that you didn't recognize or you're unclear about that matter with a person the shaykh with the imam regardless you have that right to ask because for you it's not saying that you are disrespecting the person but you just need clarity now and it's not to be taken if you ask the shaykh or the imam or whoever a question it is not to be taken as a sign of disrespect now uh, unless it is done in a district, another person, wording was not very uh, respectful. Then that's a different matter. So the companion was that they were questioning certain things so as to gain clarity. Uh, so when he explained, uh, so the Prophet wasn't clear regarding the matter. فقال فإنه لو حدث في صلاة شيء أنبهتكم به So here Islam that mentioned that if there's anything new, I would have informed you. Now I'm sure you to know if anything that he knew that he would somewhat explain those things to the, uh, uh, to the people then. He would explain those matters to the people uh, then. وَلَكِنْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرْ أَنْسَى كَمَا تَنْسَوْ Then he mentioned that, as for the matter, that perhaps, that uh, bear in mind that I'm a person, I'm a human being, and I sometimes I may forget, as you will forget. But the Prophet I'm concerned that you know, his level of forgetfulness, or if he was to forget something, that it would not be left uncorrected, as we had mentioned before. So the Prophet ﷺ did something that was uh, we said now out of forgetfulness or out of error, then those matters would not be left un uh, uh, uncorrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's a person who is legislating or explaining the legislation of Islam. So anything that he may and sometimes he may forget a particular matter. So as a lesson to be learned from this, regarding concerning us as human beings, concerning us in our normal situation, human beings, that we may fall into scenarios like these, but how to correct those scenarios or situation. So it was done as a form of still a lesson for us. Still a lesson for us. Then he mentioned our concern on a bashar. It shows regarding that you know, as a bashar, human being, he still function in most cases, he's a human, he's a human being, except regarding revelation. The last part of that, I've revealed to him revelation, but most of his function and some things maybe is particular to him as a prophet and as a rasul, but in most of his function, he functions as a normal human being. So I mean that we should not elevate him beyond the status or the place that he's deserving. As we mentioned, you find some people, because of, of being, in, being a prophet of Islam, that sometimes they overly Elevate Imam Islam are beyond what he's deserving, and that's Hulu Fidin. As Isa Islam, the case before he with Isa Islam, that he was overly elevated till he became an object of worship. And even all Prophet Islam, to some of the Muslim uh, who claim Islam, he become an object of worship. He become an object of worship. So regarding Al Isma, or said infallibility, is related regarding. Uh, at Tabaliq ad deen is regarding him communicating the religion. So I said upon a person, the Prophet is ma'asum, is infallible, is regarding him explaining the religion. He's not going to give us anything regarding the religion except it is the pure, the pure thing, without any fault or error with it. Now, uh, then he mentioned, فَإِذَا نَسِيتُ فَذَكِّرْنِي That if I make an error, then you should correct me regarding those matters. فَإِذَا شَاكَ أَحَدُكُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ فَلِتَهَرَّرْ الصَّوَابِ Then he mentioned at the end of the hadith, that if any of you make a, a, is a, of doubt regarding the salat, then he should try to uh, come to or work out the matter uh, to the end of the hadith. So this hadith, is also to get, uh, it's, uh, uh, the point regarding, as I mentioned, If any of you have any doubt regarding Salat, then try to, uh, to work it out. And all of my meaning concerning 
the person who you're more inclined towards that you are displaced in your salat. So become a person that's not gonna the fun, you think that you're more inclined, you're more inclined that you are at this stage instead of either in the fourth or the third raka, then you can somewhat you work from there. Uh, that's concerning the as sawab. Falutim Arihi Thumma Yasjud Sajdatain. Then uh, he mentioned that uh, complete the salat Thumma Yasjud Sajdatain. They mentioned he should uh, perform Sajdatain. The hadith did mention the Sajdatain is become, is it before Taslim or after? The hadith, Mutaf Kunale Ibn Mas'ud, didn't point out is this Sajdatain to be done before the Taslim or after the Taslim? But it mentioned Sajdatain or Sajdatu Sahu. Additional sujood to be done. But where is to be done? Nam. So the, the, the rewind from Bukhari, can I somewhat then can I somewhat explain that further? The rewind in Bukhari, can I somewhat explain that further by mention Falyathim, Thumma Yusallim, Thumma Yasjud. So I mentioned that a person would give the Taslim, then give the sujood after. Give the sujood after. Then an Arishat Muslim, he mentioned. So based upon this, no ulama differ, they have a, di uh, have a difference regarding if the person is in doubt. The hadith of Ibn Sud mentioned what the such detain when before after taslim. Such detain meaning sujud the sahu is to be done before or after taslim. The hadith before of uh, Abu Sa'id al Khutri. It is to be done where, when, before. where, before. No? But this one state when? After. After. So the person, if have some doubt in the Salat, there's doubt, and he's trying to come to, to make a decision to work out where he's at. No? So they mentioned that uh, if the person able to work it out, work it out where he's at, then he can perform the sujood, abuse, and the uh, sadatayni, as in this hadith, after taslim. Because he's able to work it out. And the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, if he was unable to work it out, so he went to the system of using, going to the least number. In that case, he does the uh, sujil sahu before taslim. But if he was able to work it out, then he give the sujil sahu after taslim. Clear? Clear with me? Clear? Okay. Uh, so even if you work here, it's still required to do that. Hey, so that's what some of the ulama, they mentioned a person, uh, still permiss a permissible person to do sujood as sahu. Still permissible a person to do sujood as sahu. And the hadith in the narration of Muslim, he can also mention, when the Muslim said that such that he as sahu, bad as salam, wal kalam. The narration of Imam Muslim, it mentioned something additional that he gave sujood or made sujood sahu after taslim and after kalam meaning he gave the taslim and then he spoke was involved in some type of conversation then after then he gave sujood sahu so some type of interruption between the taslim and sujood sahu which was, which is kalam, speech, some type of discussion took place. So it shows that sujood sahu sometimes can be done after the person may have involved, or maybe the person was involved in some form of uh, conversation or did some act just after salat. And was not done immediately after the salat. They mentioned kalam. Sajada. Sajdatayni Sajdatay as-sahu as Ba'd as-salam wal kalam So he spoke I mentioned the hadith before that Some kind of uh, sp uh, conversation took place Before he gave the Sujood to sahu So show that it can be Sometimes be delayed Now uh, If the person for example uh, Wasn't uh, mindful Of so the person made an error in the salat uh, gave the taslim, he was thinking of doing sujood sahu, but forgot also that. And then gave, start giving his, give the taslim and start giving his tasbih. Then he mentioned, I said, we'll give my sujood as sahu. He can do it right there. 
You can make it, you can do it to do it. Some will write then. Who are the people in the Jama'a following? Huh? If the Imam, then they follow the Imam. If concerned, everybody has moved, those who are there, they can do it on their own. Individually. No? Uh, so what if he doesn't remember to like he's praying another prayer? Then, and then, like, oh. then it still can be done. <coughs> it still can be done. They have a discussion between Sula Ulama, as I mentioned before, that regarding if the person was it was did done later on, delayed, not immediately. Some mention if he's still in the salat or said still within in the masjid. So he's still in the masjid. Now as we discussed on if also some people, if the person have left the masjid, is it come easy to still make it up? Because they have left the premise of the masjid. So it you know, in if it's still within a reasonable amount of time, it still can be done. So within a reasonable amount of time, even though the person have left the masjid, it still can be done, it's still in a reasonable time. But at two days or so after, mm -hmm. they understand that a long time have passed. Yeah. <coughs> What's the case then? Would you have to repeat the salat? No, that's not repeat the salat. Okay. I don't have to repeat the, the salat. You haven't got it, no? Huh? You don't have to repeat the salat. <coughs> Comments and hadith concerning that uh, when those people, the Prophet concerned Dulya Dain, when some of the people they left the masjid. Mm. Now, so some people remain, oh, yeah. some people left the masjid, and the Prophet concerned didn't send anyone to okay, those people have left the masjid, tell them they have to repeat their salat. So it says, you know, so him remaining silent regarding their affairs, even though the error was made and he corrected with those who were present, but he didn't per se send anyone to correct those people regarding them making up for those to do so. Now, so sure to know that their salat was still deemed to be valid. <coughs> Is that for the boy another to sleep after the? No, without that sleep, but do that. So do sahu, and that's enough. That's enough. Hey, that's enough. What can contribute to the um, that lack of knowing where you were in the prayer? Because sometimes you find it can happen quite often in the prayer. Like, Second, third. Another other thing that can come from is that the person praying too much by themselves. Yeah. Something so of the things that so the more the person pray by themselves, then the person may become more prone to fall into it. Now, so the other thing concerned that's not thing concerning that's not the legislation concerning praying in the jama. It helps in those things. Praying in the jama, it helps in those things. Can someone to help you also to focus? Now, but also the person that's not if the person have to pray by themselves, then uh, try not to be in a rush regarding your salat. Now, so before you start, can I somewhat, uh, as I said, now with the Adana, those things, uh, can I somewhat try to prepare yourself, give yourself, you know, uh, uh, can I somewhat settle yourself before you go into your Salat? So you don't find yourself that you're in a rush. In a sense, can I somewhat, you're calm, you're settled. So when you go into your Salat, you can also can function that way throughout the Salat. Now, uh, so that's of all those things that may can help. Do you have to do? Do you ever have to do to sleep again after the sujud al-sahu or never? In any case, I mean. In this case, the hadith he comes that that uh, don't mention concern to do the sahu without and say uh, taslim again. Okay, but there yeah. are some cases where you have. To and in some cases, we said that in the case of that, uh, there are certain cases that uh, repeat the test. Uh, so the general rule that we mentioned that concerned the person if the uh, if the the taslim can be done as again, as we mentioned in some cases. There were mentioned in cases where the taslim was done a second time. Yeah. Now the taslim was mentioned a second time. Taslim. Then to do the sahu. So the person gave the taslim, do the sahu, and then do the taslim again a second time. In certain cases, that's in the, the normal concern if you're in the mass in the salat. Yeah. But in this case, with a person of uh, uh, something I've gone, that's if they're done uh, immediately after each other. But if time has passed, then a person is going to restrict himself just for the, the sujud the sahu. Then uh, discuss concerning that particular matter. Then discuss concerning uh, of this matter. They mentioned if any of you have any doubt in salat, they mention here regarding that uh, that particular that applies to the compulsory and the nafil salat. So the same rules regarding a person having doubt whether it's in the compulsory or the nafila, the same rule applies. Now, uh, as some of the ulama, they try to, uh, so, that's also, so it is, uh, 
whatever is allowed in the compulsory is also allowed in the nafila. Whatever allowed in the compulsory is also allowed in the nafila. So the person, uh, whatever, uh, uh, so the same applies to salat al nafila. And Imam Bukhara, he mentioned in his tajum in his book, as sahu fir fardwal tatawa, that a person also uh, should do sahu, his rules applies to the compulsory and also the, the voluntary salat. And it is mentioned concerning that uh, Ibn Abbas, that in Salat al Witr, that he will make, if he, uh, that he will do, should do the sahu in Salat al Witr. So, sure, it's another salaf from the Sahaba that uh, in some of their uh, the Salat al Tatawa, voluntary Salat, that uh, they would perform to do sahu Ibn when Abbas. they made error. Ibn Abbas. Aywa. For no reason. Uh, no, for there be a reason, but can someone just indicate that, no, that it was profound, uh, uh, done yeah. himself, Abu Huraira. That uh, and others that they would uh, perform sujud sahu even a nafila salat. So in uh, winter, or if you're praying uh, uh, qiyamul layl, or uh, the person praying uh, the uh, the sunan al ratiba before or after the salawat, compose salat. If errors will occur in those salat, the person also uh, allowed and uh, to do sujud sahu. And that's the call of jumur of the ulama. Jumur of the ulama. They after that view that sujood sahu can be performed also in the nafila salawat or tatawa. And you find some of the ulama of the view, as mentioned by Ibn Hajar, that la sujda fi salat tatawa. As some of them hold that in the salat tatawa, there is no sujood sahu to be performed. But from the salaf, from the sahaba, that some of them did do it. Some did do it. And Jumur of the majority of the ulama, they are of that view that it can be done. So that's concerning that uh, particular uh, matter. <coughs> then the next hadith that he discussed, the hadith. is going next to be in, in the narration of Ahmed Abu Dawood. Yeah, that's the next, okay. From the hadith from Abdullah bin Jafar, radiallahu anh. Marfu. A marfu. I was a marfu meaning? Back to the campaign. To the marfu? To the campaign. You say the marfu. I always said marfu means. So we have a. A was a marfu. Going back to the Prophet of Islam. Marfu. Going back to the Prophet of Islam. Mawkuf. You have Mawkuf. Going back to the. A companion. Mawkuf. Go back to the companion. Whoever doubts about his salah should make two persuasions after the sleep. Ibn Khuzayma has rated it sahih. Aywa. So you have this hadith now that is discussed that is collected by Imam Abu Dawood uh, in his book, also the hadith in the Nasa'i, and also uh, Imam Ahmed also collected the hadith. And there's some discussion regarding the authenticity of the hadith. So there's some discussion regarding this hadith being authentic. Uh, we mentioned Man Shaka fi Salati, Fal Yastud Sajatain, Badama Yusallim. So uh, this hadith, you have some discussion regarding the authenticity of this hadith uh, and some of the majority of the hadith that uh, the hadith is daif, that qawl uh, al that hadith is uh, daif and of those who all the hadith to be uh, daif, even Shaykh Al-Bani Rahimullah, he uh, uh, all the hadith here to be uh, daif. And also they mentioned the hadith here based upon you have some uh, uh, discussion regarding the isnad, the chain of the, uh, the hadith, some criticism upon some of the narrators and also there's some criticism regarding the uh, uh, the text the wording of the hadith man shakka fi salatihi fal yastud sajdatayhi ba'da ma yusallim that uh, uh, so there are some discussion regarding also this uh, hadith from both sides uh, but the hadith generally it is deemed to be daif And the hadith here just kind of indicate concerning that the person who uh, have doubt in salat that uh, is allowed to perform uh, sujood the sahu if he has doubt in salat after the salam after the salam. And it's kind of somewhat the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud that we mentioned before and Abu Said that 
منشن قبل التسليم So we continue to concern to the hadith that we mentioned before the hadith of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Qudra uh, that uh, it can somewhat indicate concern that you know that the person are doubting salat and it goes back to al yakin then the person give the sujood uh, al-sahu qabla as-salam and as for the second hadith of uh, Ibn, Mas uh, Ibn Mas'ud then if the person uh, does the taslim or does the sujood al-sahu after the taslim based upon that he is going back to was it gharabat al -dhan. That he have more inclined or a greater uh, possibility that uh, is uh, so he would if he use uh, the stronger possibility then he goes better then he goes with then uh, the taslim is after uh, the sujud sahu after taslim but if you go back to yakin meaning that you go back to the least number then it is uh, before the the taslim and if it goes back to okay I think that the stronger possibility could be this then he goes does it after uh, the taslim. So it can be a bit, but all of my mention that whichever way the person does, it is acceptable. Whichever way, it is acceptable. Whichever way, it is still uh, acceptable. Give a second example of Ibn Masood, the hadith. Uh, Ibn Masood. The Prophet he did extra, he did extra um, raka in that salah. Because uh, they said that, is there something new? When they uh, there, there, there's something that changed, something changes salah. So he prayed extra unit of the prayer. Uh, that uh, seems to be was in doubt regarding what to be done. So there's something that so he said for Salih to Kadab Kadab, but he didn't mention specifically concerning what he prayed in this narration. Yeah. But in his days mentioned he what he prayed more, but what is the more it wasn't mentioned. Kalu Salih Kadab that you prayed a certain way, but it didn't he didn't uh, clearly explain as to what he did. What was different? And what was the thing that was different? Then we go to the next hadith, the hadith of uh, Al Muhira ibn Shu'bah. Narrated Al Muhira ibn Shu'bah, radiallahu anhu, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, When one of you doubts and stands at the end of two rakats, if, uh, if he remembers while having good one, if he remembers while having stood up completely, he should continue and should not return to the sitting position. And if he should make two prostrate, and should not return to, and he should, and he should make two prostrations. If he did not stand up straight, he should sit down, and the, and <coughs> sit down, and there is, is no forgetfulness, prostration upon him. Reported Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, but that could and that could be. with a weak uh, isnad. Hey. So they mentioned the hadith, and we mentioned, uh, we have discussed the hadith before, because the hadith of Muhir ibn Shubrat anahu, that qal alayhi sallallahu salam, idha shaka ahdukum, so again regarding the person, if any of you have doubt, faqama fi rakatayn, or rakatayni, and he stood up in the raka, so from the, he was in a sitting position, or he went up straight without sitting. Naam? So in uh, the second raka, rather than to sit, he went straight up, or in the, uh, the motion of getting up, they mentioned that uh, if the person stand completely up, then he should not go back down. Mm -hmm. So he forgot tashahud and went straight up. Now, if the person have stood up completely straight, 
then he should not go back down. Uh, and if he's still in motion, in the motion of standing up, then he can go back. Naam? So that's concerning this particular hadith, and we've discussed it before. Uh, this particular hadith is a hadith where there's some discussion between the ulama regarding its authenticity. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the ulama all the hadith to be hasan, and some of the ulama they all the hadith to be daif. Uh, so the hadith in Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, and I mentioned concerning Manasya and it is shahad wa wajalis. So the hadith is relating to the person who forgets uh, to make the tashahud uh, and stand and is on the, uh, uh, st uh, in the motion of standing up. Should he go back down or should he continue to to stand and continue salat without going back down? That's the discussion of the hadith. One of the narrator who is in the hadith, his name is uh, Jabir al Jufi. There's some discussion regarding him and others of the narrators. So you have some discussion regarding him uh, and others. Uh, you have Jabir ibn Yazid al Jufi that the person said to be a Rafidi is a Rafidi and also he said to be Matruk. Matruk is a very, uh, uh, a person said to be Matruk and this is a, a severe criticism on a person. Now we say the person is to be left. Now. So generally concerned, the person being Rafidi, Itikad, Fasid, and also Matruk is a severe criticism on the person. So a person of that type of uh, grading, criticism, then he's considered to be very weak. Can such a person of that degree, can his hadith, if he's in a hadith, Nam, is usually classed as Daif Jiddan, very, very weak. A person like him in a hadith, Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah, he mentioned that there's a hadith that is in Bayhaqi that uh, uh, mentioned uh, the same meaning now uh, we are close with the same isnad so he said put both of them together and it can somewhat strengthen each other right but the isnad it has certain similarities now uh, so some all that even though you might have the, that second narration that is in uh, Bayhaqi, that is used to strengthen this hadith, they said now both of them are still very weak. So both two weak hadith are right, of that level of weakness cannot strengthen each other. Now, uh, so it still remains weak. So hadith is very weak, it becomes difficult to strengthen it because the person is matruk. So a person of matruk generally, to get to strengthen him is difficult. To strengthen him is difficult. Especially, uh, and uh, the Isnad that is used to strengthen this particular hadith, there's also some uh, missing part in that hadith. Uh, how do I explain? There's some missing bit in the hadith in the Isnad where one of the narrator is missing Nam, and it's that same person. Nam. So you have a next Isnad, but a person that Isnad is missing with me, but it's actually this person that the same person, Jab, uh, Jabir. Oh, uh, what's his name? Jabir. So my next hadith, so you have Jabir, it is known. And next hadith that is similar, but there's someone missing in the hadith, in the Isnad. No, but and the same person though. But it was missed by some people. In some book, it is missed. Now, so you may think it's a different Isnad, but actually the same Isnad. With me? So it doesn't, so it comes back to the same person. So the Hadith in any case is still very weak, so it doesn't upgrade to Hassan. Because the weakness in both is not uh, enough to strengthen each other. I also said that before we find an even Hadith of that science, when one hadith can be strengthened by another hadith. When a hadith that is weak of a certain degree, when such a hadith can be strengthened by other hadith to upgrade it to an acceptable degree. That's the next discussion between the ulama hadith. That can also, if you might sometimes, some of the ulama sometimes may, uh, you have certain general rules, but when application, you might find it may be applied different based upon various reasons.
So you have a book on uh, uh, Imam At-Tahawi, uh, Rahimahullah. Imam At-Tahawi, Rahimahullah. He has several books uh, that mention his hadith, but it can somewhat uh, able to be found that, uh, that the print, but it found that the person who is missing is also is the same person here. So the hadith can somewhat, is, can somewhat give us uh, some clarity regarding the person who is missing because all the teachers and the students are same, the same people that are linked with him before and after him. So, kind of, so based upon that, it seems as if that he is the same person that is missing. So the hadith still goes back to him. Still goes back to him. So the hadith is daif. But say, Sheikh Alban will hadith to be Hassan. Sheikh Alban, Alban, Rahim Allah, the hadith to be Hassan. But in reality, the hadith it is weak. Based upon the second hadith. Yeah, based upon the second hadith. So you all that both together strengthen each other. But in reality, they do not. As some of the ulama of hadith have, uh, have clarified this. So Ibn Hajar and the likes of all the hadith to be daif. Ibn Hajar and the likes of all the hadith to be daif. And also Shaykh bin Baz, rahimahullah, Shaykh bin Baz, all this also the hadith that with all the king, all the, that even the, the, the second narration still doesn't give strength to each other. Uh, so this hadith generally says, uh, is to mention regarding the hadith concerned that the person, if he's in a situation of uh, already in a standing position, he should not go back. If he's still in the uh, motion of standing, he can go back to the salat, to his to the same position. So what's the reason? So it mentions that all of them disagree as to now what to be done based upon yeah. this hadith become the uh, <coughs> the guide, but it is weak. So you, you understand? So uh, so based upon this, uh, they mention that uh, so some other person that if he's he can always go back. If he stands, he still can go back to that position. Now, uh, and complete his salat. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, uh, some they are of that view that uh, mentioned that uh, دليل على أن من سهى أن خود لتشهد أول فقام وستم قاما فأنه يمضى. That uh, so some mentioned that he should continue through, but some mentioned that he still yes he can go back to that position of uh, sujood as sahu. Uh, and the hadith of uh, Abu Buhayna. Prophet that you miss sujood sahu or sujood al tashahud he continues through. No? So it, uh, if the person is reminded, if he's reminded, then he can go back. Uh, if he's not, then he just continues through. Uh, they mentioned that uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is more of the view that uh, that uh, the person should go back. Regardless, the person is in motion, which is closer to whichever way he should go back. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, that a person that uh, is more inclined, a person should go back. A sorry, ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Islam, that is not to go back. That is not to go back to Tashahud, but continue through. Ibn Taymiyyah, not to go back, but to continue through. Hey, we'll end with this one, inshallah. So you can you can carry on. It's okay because no nobody else has come locally. Okay, so when they can, whenever you okay, when you're in, let us if know. If you want to go to the end of the lesson, book. Yeah, the book. Hey, the book. It's on one. Huh? Yeah, no, we have one right. hadith. Remain on the one hadith. Right. That's it. I'm, I just set up in the hall. In hey, the, way the rest of the hadith is to uh, discuss concerning to uh, so do the tilawa. It's a different topic. Okay. Some hadith. Rest of the hadith to discuss. So do the tilawa. <coughs> so you have actually one this hadith and only one other hadith regarding Sujud so um, as Sahu. For the prayer, just come this way, brothers. Yeah. I said something for the sister. Sure. Okay. So that hadith though says no. What says no? As for this hadith though, <coughs> you do find some of the other man the view that that uh, work with this hadith. If the person uh, already stand, then he should remain standing and not to go back. And uh, if he's in a on route to standing, he can go back if he's reminded or remembers, right? And doesn't have to do so do the sahu. But if he continues through now and miss tashahud, then he has to do so do the sahu. But if he goes back 
and does sujood sahu and sorry and does the tashahud that he doesn't have to do sujood as sahu clear uh, so you have some who act upon this hadith some who uh, act upon this hadith So the ones who order the person, if he miss Sujud Sahu, they mention the person that must upon him to do, if he missed uh, Tashahud, it's a must upon him to do Sujud Sahu. A must upon him to do Sujud as Sahu. Uh, as he has missed Sujud uh, Tashahud, so it, recalled, it, it requires something to, uh, to be done to make up for it. Shaykh bin, bin Bas Rahimullah is of the view of a person in both scenarios, if he stand after missing tashahud, uh, the ta tashahud and go up standing he continues and he continues on he needs to make sujud sahu and also the person is in going uh, in motion of standing going up then go back down he still have to make sujud sahu so shaykh bin baz of the view that in, uh, in both scenarios he still make sujud sahu he still make sujood as sahu because he made an error he made an error and that's the view of the hanabila and that's the view of the mathab of the of the ulama of the hanabila In that case, the one who's behind the Imam, whatever Imam does, you follow. So in that case, regarding that a person who's, uh, if you're praying by the Imam in such scenario, that uh, whatever he does, then you follow him in that case. The Imam that is still continue, <coughs> he still uh, he stands and continue and doesn't go back, you continue with him. If he goes back, you go back with him. So whatever the Imam does in that scenario, then those behind will follow the Imam. The next hadith will be the last one of this uh, chapter. I think there's two. Or two more, Ewa, two more, Ewa, two more. We'll try to finish them quickly. Yeah. Ewa, as Dadi, they are daif type of thing. Most of they are being mentioned here, daif. Narrated Umar, radiallahu anh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, sir, sir, no, no, no. 268. <coughs> <coughs> there is no prostration or forgetfulness for one who is led in prayer by an imam. But when the Imam for, forgets, both should, both should then make prostration due to for, forgetfulness. Um, Al Bazar, is that Al Bazar? Al Bazar, Al Bayhaki reported it through a weak chain of narrators. It's a Bazar, also one of those books of hadith, one of those uh, collection of hadith. Uh, that also that book is in, in print. Uh, so the hadith is Daif, as mentioned. Bayhaki, uh, the hadith, is in uh, Daif. Hadith also in the Dara Kutni and others, but the hadith is very weak. This hadith is very uh, weak. Fihi Kharuja ibn Mus'ab. So our narrators call Kharuja ibn Mus'ab uh, mentioned, uh, Ahmed Rahimullah mentioned, La Yuktub Hadithu, that this hadith are not to be written down. Uh, Ibn Ma'in mentioned, Laysa Bishay is nothing. So that's, the, uh, so that's the way of criticizing a person. Ibn Hajra mentioned in Taqrib, Matruq is someone to be left abandoned. Uh, so you have some with the list and also that he can somewhat is a tedlis uh, that he can somewhat a modellis is a word a person that uh, makes up things regarding uh, or that tedlis is a way of another of uh, the terms that hadith is used regarding people kazab that uh, try to narrate on people that may he never heard from said that he heard from people that he didn't hear from sometimes he does because he wants to he heard a hadith from people who are liars. So he's trying to hide them. So they call it a modellis. So you have different type of, different forms of tedlis. It's a form of deception. So tedlis is a form of deception by with narrators. Now, so sometimes the person that, uh, he, has, he heard a hadith, but the person he heard from directly, the person who himself is a liar. But he wants to go around him. So he mentioned, as he says, hadithani, and he might be quiet. Qala Abdullah. But Abdullah come later down. But he cannot give the impression. But he doesn't say, Qala hadathani. 
he actually remained silent, and that's the person that he heard from directly. He says, Hadathani Abdullah. Abdullah is down the chain. Down the later on. But his silence, Hadathani, and he paused a little, was he intend to mention a person who he heard directly from, but he doesn't want to mention him. You with me? Yeah. Then he mentioned Hadathani Abdullah. Abdullah is not really the person he heard from directly, is later on. And Tadis uh, Shiyuk. And Talis a Shaykh, so sometimes mention Shaykh and I, I mention in a different way. You know, Nash, uh, uh, Nasruddin. So he said, No, I know, Adathani Abu Abdullah. No one knows Nasruddin Abu Abdullah. So cool. No? But he understands, so some of yeah, try to mention him other than what he's known for. So he found a different type of Tadlis. And you also add um, only the real people that knew the Ilma Rajah, they could detect this stuff. And as one said, after this, uh, is his own, uh, one of the signs we can have some uh, deed uh, that requires some work, uh, uh, of those things that require a lot of effort and speciality in the Ilma Rajah. But a general kind of person is known to be uh, that uh, uh, can be a, a modelist upon certain people, but the hadith is very weak, the hadith is very weak. But so the general meaning of hadith is correct. The general meaning of hadith is correct regarding one, laysa ala man khalf al-imam sahu. Meaning the person who prays behind the imam, meaning that if you pray behind the imam, you made an error in your salat. Now, you were to, for example, you pray the imam, and the imam, uh, goes into ruku and you go uh, going into ruku and you went down into sujood with me so he said allah akbar is going into ruku but you went right down into sujood then you came back and go back into ruku to catch him so you made an error the one behind the imam not the imam so the person who prayed by the imam you made an error now at the end of that for example the error you went into sujood and imam went into what ruku you do not make sujood sahu after you don't need to Clear? So you made an error. The one behind the Imam. The Imam didn't make an error. So you do not need to make sujood sahu at the end of your salat. Because the Imam salat will be suffice for yours. For that error. Now, uh, so that matter is correct from the hadith. There is a view by some of the Zaydiya. Here the Zaydiya is a branch of the Shia. And like example the Houthi. In their matter, yeah, the Houthi people in Yemen now, they are part Zaydiya with other madness with them. Now, uh, type of thing. Uh, but in their method, they are all of you, the person, they per, they're in their method, as the view of uh, Sonani, that if the person makes, behind the Imam, makes an error in the Salat, then he has to make so due to so the end of the Salat. Meaning, if he made an error in the salat and the imam says, Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullah, Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullah, you say, Salaam alaykum wa then you make sujood sahu. Because you made an error. You made an error, so you have to correct your error by making sujood sahu. So you might see them doing this. If I ask them why, they will tell you. May tell you, but. <laughs> you understand? So, but that's their view. So you might find a person who, you understand? So you have those people do it. Or some people may do it based upon that belief or that uh, and some may do it sometimes it becomes an next bidder. Whenever they pray in the salat, they make so do, they make two rakatain, it's not per se so do the sahu, just rakatain additional or so such so, so that after the salat for no reason. Yeah, some people then that's a bidder. You understand? Then that becomes a bidder, that's a separate thing. Unless they have that belief and we don't know. After Zaydia. That's the Shia though. Hey, some Shia do it. I see him do it. It's just one, it's not two. I just see him doing it every time. Or so. so as soon as he does salam. Yeah, so if that's the case, then either just ask why, if he's doing it based upon that, he doesn't need to explain his reason, but for him to do it, then that's a bidah. Without a reason. For him to do it after the Imam, then that becomes a bidah. Or if the person wants to do those type of, uh, to make sujood after the salat, for no valid reason, except for Surah Sahu, then that becomes also an act of bidah. With me? So the person does do that without a, re a valid reason, then that's an act of bidah. 
Because he added to the Salat, and the Salat, the Prophet Islam ever taught us this. Now, but, uh, so he said that, uh, that's regarding that scenario. The second case uh, is regarding mention, فَإِنْ سَهَا الْإِمَامْ فَأَلَيْهِ وَعَلَى مَنْ خَلْفَهُ So the second scenario, if the Imam made an error in the Salat, and he made sujood al sahwa whatever place, at the end, uh, then you follow him in that matter. Even though you didn't make an error, he made an error, the Imam, but you still follow him in making sujood al sahwa whether before the Taslim or after the Taslim. With me? Okay, the next third scenario. Before we move on, that brings me to sort of an incident that happened some years ago, playing in uh, Salat al Fajr in one of the local masjids, and these people, they call themselves Hanafi. The Imam said he was bleeding their blood on his clothes or something. Mm. So they came to us later in the death of his mother, and he was asking people, Were you here for Fajr? Were you here for Fajr? So the people that were said, Yeah. So he said, We have to pray again. So we inquired why. He said, oh, I had blood on me. So I said to him, You had blood on you. I didn't have blood on me. I've completed my prayer without any errors. So what would be the. The reason for you to. Uh, you tell people. To start, because you're telling people to pray again. Hey. This happened with Wudu as well. One day, one day. And said, maybe go back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then they said, is the, is the blood from him, he had a cut, or the blood, he just had a blood on him? No, I don't know, he didn't say, he didn't say. Then they said, maybe he's thinking that either having the blood on him or the blood from him, that is the invalid of the Salah, of the Wudu. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that could be the reason he's saying that, but uh, uh, in any scenario, you said the matter concerning a person uh, bleeding, does it nullify a Wudu or not? That's a discussion between the ulama. You understand? But it doesn't require a person to repeat his salat. You understand? But maybe he thought. Uh, so uh, back to uh, the next third scenario. So the second was the Imam made an error. So we follow him in Sujud Sahu. Even though the one behind didn't make an error. The third scenario uh, they mentioned uh, would be a person came and you're praying by the Imam, but you came late for the salat. So, for example, you miss raka, you miss two raka, or one, or whatever amount. But you, when you came, they were already, they were already ahead of you. You miss a raka or two, but you came and you joined the salat of the imam. At the end of his salat, so for example, you have raka ten to make up. At the end of his salat, the imam he gives uh, uh, sujud to sahu. No? So you're still there waiting and you expected him to give the, the Taslim. No? If he give the test uh, to do so before the Taslim, then you what? You follow him. But if he gives it now, he give the, uh, the Taslim and, he's to, and then he is to do the to do the Sao, but some people say sometimes some people they move quick where they Yes, so even that part, when he does, for example, he gives the taslim. Those are the, the ideal thing, the person, right? Uh, you give your taslim when the imam gives both his taslim. So you give the first one, don't wait until he's on his second. As mentioned by Ibn Rajab. With me? So in the in this scenario, the imam, he gave the taslim. Then he went into sujood, as sahu. Then you follow him also. And he will give, for example, he give another teslim, then you then continue on. What happens if you do, if you do just jump up? Yeah. Then the, the next scenario, the person jumps up, in that case you have now did your sujood as sahu with him. So you just complete your salat and you end it. But the case of the person now, he moved before the imam gave the sujood as sahu. At the, then at the end of his salat, he does it. At the end of his salat, he does it. Or A. So either you do it with the Imam there, or if you miss, you do it at the end. And some mentioned that uh, it's not a part, uh, uh, a part of my house, that's not, he has to do the sujood to sahu. 
at the end because he didn't represent the Imam in an error and corrected his error. But uh, so you have that discussion between the ulama. So, uh, so he made the sujood with the Imam and in a way of following the Imam. But at the end, if he missed him, missed that sujood sahu, because the Imam did it, then you can just make it up at the end of your salat or you can miss it. You can not do it, but you don't know what error he made. Uh, or you can do it based upon that. You miss the sujood sahu at that particular point with the Imam. Clear? A. Hey. And some mention, Kaul Thani, if the Imam does the sujood as sahu, after Taslim, Nam, you don't have to, you don't have to make it with him. So if the person was to stand up immediately and you didn't and you miss his sujood sahu and you can somewhat stand up, you don't have to go back. You just continue your salat, you don't have to make up anything. You don't have to make up anything. That's another view of some of the, the ulama. So with that insha'Allah ta'ala, that's, that's considered that particular masala. Then you have the last hadith of Thawban. Narrated Thawban, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, there are two frustrations after the taslim salutation, for each, forget, for each for forgetfulness. Hey, so that hadith in the, hey, rawahu. Abu Jumud and Ibn Majah reported for a chain of narration. Hey, so hadith also is da'if. And the hadith generally discussed concerning that uh, if uh, for every error that occur, every error that occur in a sat, it requires its separate, it, its own sujood sahu. For every error, if the person made two errors in the salat, then you have to do two sets of sujood sahu. You made three errors in the salat, three sets of sujood sahu, and that's not the case. So the hadith is daif. Uh, and by way of concern of Prophet Islam practice and the Sahaba, they didn't, when, no one did this. Do a series of Sujudu Sahu for multiple errors that occur in the start. No one, that is not known. There's no narration of that type. Who's the narrator? Who is the That is the Hadith of Thawban. Is it Abu Dawud? A narrator that they call Zuhir ibn Salim. Al Anasi. So the narrator in the hadith, Zuhir ibn Salim al Anasi, his hadith are Zuhir. very weak. Eh? Zuhir ibn Salim al Anasi. So he narrates on Thawban, even though he didn't hear from him. So he mentioned Thawban, who's a Sahabi, but actually he didn't hear from him many things. So the narrator of a person that he didn't hear anything from, so that's also a problem. And also, his hadith are considered to be munkar. Uh, so, uh, his hadith are generally that they're weak. So, general hadith is discussed when a person makes uh, multiple uh, error in the salat. Then, for each error, there's supposed to be its own uh, sujood or sahu, but that's not the case. That's not the case. What's the meaning of Munka in this um, hadith terminology? I answered that. Uh, yeah, so the Mustalahat, Munkar, you understand with some of the ulama, it can have various meaning. But Munkar that's gonna, is to indicate that something that uh, severe error occur. Severe error occur. But you have different, in some Mustalahat today, it's still under, they're like a some wordings in hadith maybe have more than one meaning but for a while it was used in a particular way but in reality it may carry more than one meaning and munkar is one of those ones so it can have more than one meaning depending on the context of the imam of the art of looking at the person hadith and the type of error that is involved what is that indicating that it is a severe error is it the same munkar that um, appears in the quran no, no. Yeah, it's not the same. Aye. Okay, so the uh, terminals that they have, like for example, a sunnah. One word in different different signs of Islam may have a different meaning. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the word, for example, a sunnah in a hadith, in usul al-fiqh, 
and the people of Aqidah in different sciences carry different meaning. So in the word Sunnah, it has to be understood in the science that you're looking at. And you can't use a general meaning. So every context it has to be used in the context of the science that you're looking at. So if in Hadith, it will be understood as used by the people of Hadith. In Fiqh, as you the people in Fiqh, the word Sunnah. In Usul al-Fiqh, based upon the people of Usul al-Fiqh. So each science, that word has to be taken in there, in that science, context. <coughs> you understand? So various words you find fall into that category. Each, that word, have a linguistic meaning, but also in every science, it carries a different meaning. So it's so a use it in the context that it is being used in this scenario or case. And Munkar is one of those. And even its own science of hadith, it has different meaning. It can be understood, uh, used in several ways. And one of the words that today find a lot of discussion regarding Munkar, what is meant by Munkar. But that's the next discussion. That's the next discussion. But generally, it does indicate concerning severe weaknesses. And in a nutshell, it indicates concerning that uh, the person is a severe weakness. The person is narrating things that is, he shouldn't be narrating. He's narrating things that he should not be uh, narrating in a sense of their severe errors. So that's concerning that's uh, regarding that particular uh, matter and that with that hadith it comes to an end regarding the matters or some of the matter rega matters relating to sujood as sahu sujood as sahu What was the name of the narrator at the end? The, um, the week? Is it Salwan? Uh, so, uh, so here even uh, Anasi 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 He's the one that the that makes him uh, He's the one no, he's the right in the song bag, I He's the right in the song bag. Yeah, he narrates and told but he never, never, never he didn't hear anything from song bag. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, himself has, is criticized. He himself is criticized. You don't want to lose him. <laughs> but also, to add to it, he, you understand, mentioned Thoban when he didn't actually hear anything from Thoban.